2410 Engineering Materials Tutorial 9 Processing of Metal Alloys So, we are engineers, so we must know how can we fabricate and process the materials, especially for metals and alloys, to form objects in order to make machines, etc. So, for our, for our engineers, fabrication and processing procedures is our one of our point of interest and basically adversely affects some of the properties of metals and alloys so in this tutorial comes as from tutorial 5 and tutorial 8 will be extensively used tutorial 9 part 1 metal forming all of the metal forming operations can be characterized uh, using the working temperature. If the working temperature is higher up, uh, above that, above the crystallization temperature, we call it hot working. If it is not, then we call it cold working. And that's the formation of an of an object by uh, by using the metal uh, involves the def deformation of the usually involves the deformation of the metal. So. Uh, basically, we consider the deformation in these two processes. Uh, one is hard working and one another is co working. For hard working operations, uh, which uh, can, uh, the large repeated deformations can be achieved as it remains, the metal remains soft and ductile, and energy requirements are less than that for co working. Um, but however, there is oxidation issues if you try to use hard working. For co-working, the deformation is achieved at the temperature below the crystallization temperature. You produce an increase in strength of the co-worked metal piece, but there is a decrease in the hardy. And this is basically string hardening, which is which I have included in tutorial 5. So, the first metal forming operations is forging. Forging is mechanically working or deforming a single piece of usually a hot metal to a desired shape. And basically, this is some of the example of such operation forging. And an externally applied force, which uh, which is which uh, go through the die and up and uh, it is applied on the hot metal. And the usually hot metal, and due to the externally up, uh, at the, the external force and the, the shape of the die, the metal can be formed into our desired shape. There is some of the example. This is rolling, and this this is um, it's cooling, and etc. During the forging processes, the dislocations are increased. Metal alloy uh, you will experience an increase in strength and a decrease in hardy as there is more dislocations will be produced in the process, and which is harder to deform when if the uh, metal contains more dislocations, um, which I have mentioned it in the tutorial for, and the green geometry and size will change. And the originally isotropic isotropic um, material which will change will usually change to an an isotropic. Basically, it means the mechanical properties in different directions of the of the piece will have different properties. Will have different uh, uh, such as different value for the elastic modules and to that it can increase strength on some directions for the piece for the metal piece let's say for this um, metal piece where it has such a green size and geometry when an external force for example is applied on, on the top and on the bottom and um, 
such metal piece is forged, it will change turn to this one. Well, this one, you can see that the, the green size and technology is clearly different from the, the original one. And therefore, it, its property, its mechanical property is an isotropic. And energy um, used in such process and it's stored in the increased amount of these locations. And there is actually other natural forming operations, for example, casting and other techniques. Casting is basically when we mold a metal or alloy come to be completely molten. And, and when, when we use the molten metal to pour into a mold, Empty, which having the desired shape for our final piece, then after the solidification of the liquid metal or liquid alloy, it will have the shape of the mold, but there is some in, some shrinkage of the piece. The result of what piece will be isotropic, uh, and the mold can be of sand, dye, etc. So for why? Casting will produce isotropic pieces basically because you have it will completely recrystallize into into grains, and where the grains is uh, string free, um, which unlike the cold cold work um, drain, which will store some energy, the some string energy into it, and and another technique is called the powder metallurgy. Basically, it is a compression of powder metals following by heat treatment to produce a denser piece, which is uh, which also involves using a mold. But uh, instead of pouring the liquid metal, we we use the powder and use the heat treatment to strengthen it. So we come to an example of why. For blacksmiths to, to make a blade, they usually forge a blade instead of casting a blade. And casting, you can cast a blade. Basically, you just pour the molten metal into the blade mold, and after the, it have um, it have solidified, you get a um, blade. But um, instead of using a, a casting mold, they they usually use a, a piece of such iron, which is um, which have uh, be heated to red hot, and use a hammer to shape the original workpiece to the desired shape of a blade. And why? So basically, so for a forged blade, as I mentioned, forging will increase the strength um, due to the strength hardening for a metal work piece. And as you can see here, the hammer, when it hammers the work piece, you plastically form the work piece. And in such process, it is the, um, the dislocations will increase and the shape of the um, grains within the, within the metal or within the workpiece will deform and which is basically the string the point principle for string hardening uh, which uh, such effect cannot be produced by casting because when you cast a um, uh, cast a plate it will only produce the, the all of the string free grains and the location number are fewer than a forged plate 